All right, first couple of things we talk about is, is the way the process is going. I think this is a big, a big question, especially where, where we are in Baltimore, and this process is speeding up so much as freshmen in high school now are, are committing. If anyone reads inside the cross, I'm starting to see that now. There's at least two or three freshmen are committing. Um, and that, that, that kind of gets a lot of people worried. It gets us as coaches worried. You know, I, I can't imagine making a decision when I was a freshman in high school. So a couple things I just want to talk about the speed. Everyone's speed of the process is a little different. I think every college is, is a little different. Every kid's is a little different. And I think the biggest thing is, as a parent, as a player, as a coach, we do this all, we talk about this all the time, is you can't get pressured into making a decision. I think you've got to realize this is an exciting time playing high school lacrosse. You know, we encourage guys to play football, play basketball, play golf, play tennis, do whatever you can to do something other than lacrosse all the time. Enjoy being in high school. When you come to lacrosse in college, it is a full-time job. We'll talk about that in a second here. But as this process goes on, along, the biggest thing is understanding that you guys control the process more than we do. You guys can go through and visit schools, ask questions, go on websites. You know, as many colleges have great websites on the cost, financial aid, athletic scholarships, all those things. And every Division I school, the max we're allowed to have in scholarships is 12.6 scholarships for the whole team. I think that's something that gets lost in the shuffle when it comes down to times of making an offer to kids. And Division I teams, and not every team has the full 12.6 scholarships. So you have that. So as you go through the process, you have 12.6 scholarships spread out over four years ago. That's a little different than football and basketball that give full rides and give money for bucks and meals and all those things. We don't do that across. So that's one piece of that puzzle. And as you, you go through this process, a lot of these kids that are freshmen and sophomores that are committing are committing to roster spots and the potential to have money. So that's where I kind of say the parents kind of have some control over this. So understand that this is a big decision, you know, and you got to go through and research and ask coaches questions, ask Coach all for you guys in this program. Him and I talk all the time. We text. We have two of these guys on our team right now. Uh, one's a freshman, John Horner. is a sophomore for us. We just helped with that clinic. We'll do that next clinic, too. And you got a good relationship there. And that's a big piece of our job as coaches is to talk to the high school coaches, talk to the club coaches. And you as parents got to understand that the process is in your hands and making sure that we don't feel rushed into making the decision is a big thing that we're seeing in this process. The IMLCA is a great resource we have. It's IMLCA.org, or you can Google that. And that's the Intercollegiate Men's Lacrosse Coaches Association. So that's the association that all Division One, Two, and Three coaches belong to. So we just had our convention in December. That has all kinds of things. We have our own kind of recruit database in there. So you can fill out your information, and every coach has access to it. Division One, Two, and Three. So you talk about a great place to go online, IMLCA. Put all your stuff in, you put highlight tapes up there, send me an email coach, this is the link on the IMLCA website for me. It also has our recruiting calendar, it has recruiting questions, it kind of has everything that you would need as a parent. The one thing I like to talk about is the commitment. I think this is something that, is, that gets lost from high school to college, and we talk about Towson all the time to our recruits, is what is a commitment to play Division I lacrosse? And I'm going to talk about three different commitment levels. One is, you know, just at the civilian Division I school at Towson, Ohio State, where I went and coached, is it is 20 hours a week when you are in season of actual practice. So that's practice, and that's 20 hours a week is almost a full-time, half a full-time job for all the parents out there that know, like, that's a lot of time. Plus, you're taking anywhere from 15 to 18, some schools 20 credit hours, so that makes up 40 hours right there. Plus, you think about coming in, getting ready to get for practice, getting picked up, seeing the trainer, doing extra work, which John can attest to that we talk about at Towson all the time, is good teams and great teams. The difference is in the players. It's the guys and how much they're doing on their own. And that's something that we talk about all the time at Towson is the opportunity to do more. To separate yourself from being a good player in college to an all-conference, to a starter, to an all-American, is that time you use outside that 20 hours of class, 20 hours of, of practice to do more. Plus, when you travel, we're fortunate, again, where we're located, where half our schedule is 30 minutes away or less. So that makes it nice for us when you're here at Ohio State, where I went to school, everything's six and a half, half hour bus ride. So that's a little different. So you factor in the bus ride into that actual commitment level. <coughs> it's a long time. So I think that, that's the big thing that gets lost in a lot of this process is, you know, your Division I experience is lacrosse, 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 academics, academics, and then you have some time for the social side of hanging out with your teammates and, and that aspect of it. At the Naval Academy, we got Naval Lacrosse right there, it's a much different world. <laughs> There, it's all military, all academics, and then the lacrosse is still at 20 hours a week, so you have even less free time. And Division three, when I coach at Denison, is you, know, you play fall lacrosse, then you're off until January, February, whenever you start up. And there, it's more lacrosse and academics have a much more balance out of season. And then in season, 
again, everywhere you go, you're, you're really getting after 20 hours a week plus the bus trips. I know a lot of different coaches come there. So I think that, that's a big thing that people don't understand is the actual commitment level that you have to put in to play Division I lacrosse is tremendously high. What should you be concentrating on the most? Academics. If you, academics. I would say, I'm going to cut you off and let you keep that product. If you're a sophomore in high school, take the PSATs or the SATs as early and as many times as you physically possibly can if you want to play Division I Cross. I think that's something that's getting lost in the speeding up of the recruiting process. I think from other than that is, again, narrowing your schools down, some schools you're interested in visiting, some schools you're interested in of going online, kind of seeing, you know, what majors you might be interested in. I think that's the biggest thing that's tough. We ask kids all the time that come and visit, like, what are you interested in studying? You're a sophomore in high school, you have no idea. <laughs> you know, they have that. I have business. Everyone says, take the time to be organized as a kid and a parent and just say, like, these are the schools. Don't email 100 schools and say, dear coach, I'm really interested in your, your college or university. You know, just take that extra time and say, these are 10 schools. See a big school, see a small school, see a, an academy, see a Division II school, Division III school. You never know what you're going to like. And again, I'm, like I said, I'm a Long Island kid. Never in a million years did I think I'd end up at Ohio State. The way the NCAA rules are, we are not allowed to email, call back, or do anything to anyone who's under their junior year. So if you're a freshman or sophomore, we can't call you, we can't email you, except with camp information. So that's kind of how coaches' camp information and questionnaires, all we can email out the kids. If you're a junior in high school, all we can do is email. We can't call you at all. After July 1st of your junior year, so going to your senior year, we can call once a week. So the kids that are rising seniors then, we can call once a week. We can email you and do all that stuff. That's the unique part of it, too, is you understand we're recruiting sophomores that we can't email, we can't call. So if we get a call, guys that coach all, say, hey, coach, I really want to talk to you, but you haven't called me. So we text these guys, we call these coaches, which for us is good because we get to get more feedback on the kids. What's he doing? How's he doing in school? What's he like as a player? What's he like as a person? Is he a worker? Is he, you know, so we kind of get a little bit more feedback. It's more difficult for us just to communicate with kids sometimes. You try to get that message out about whatever school you're at. It makes it a little harder. And then, if they're interested in, I mean, how do you... In, in us? Yeah, like, how, how, how do you sort of figure out if you're both interested in each other? Is that, it's going through guys like Coach Ol, for us, it's saying, like, this is the guy we saw, we're really interested, or are you guys going through, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but a lot of coaches will then contact us and be like, hey, these guys are really interested, these are the events they're in. You guys are fortunate to play in a club team that's well-respected that a lot of coaches go see when they play. So we, in Maryland, we have a thousand events in Maryland every summer and fall. We make sure we go see Titanium when they come in, Philly Showcase. Friday night at PBL Park. I know Coach Hall wasn't there, but I was there. You know, then we saw it Saturday and Sunday when the kids and the teams were there. So I think that's part of being on a good club team really helps you. In, in that. That's a, that, that's a unique to every school where some schools give a lot of athletic scholarship to a small amount of guys. Some schools give a lot of guys a little bit amount of money. That's every kind of school's preference. So there's some schools they can be half the teams on money, half the teams not. Pretty That's a good question. The new rules for those people, like the horns are, are no longer, so the ball goes out of bounds on the sideline, there's no horn anymore, so it's just more of an up-tempo, quicker restarts. Similar to the MLL game, except there's no sh full shot clock. That's definitely changing how we recruit. You have to recruit two-way minutes. You can't have guys that are a liability playing defense. You should not be able to get them off the field most of the time. You can get one, hopefully two guys off the field. So in every midfield line, you're getting one guy stuck on every time. So that's a different piece of it. You're also doing different things offensively to create mismatches and keep guys on offensive minis on the field that you know are liabilities. So you're looking for more athletic two-way guys in the midfield especially to kind of handle those new rules. All right, that's a good question. I, I think the one thing now that, that we're seeing that really separates kids is the weight room. I think the weight room is a big, big thing now. In, high, in my high school, we didn't even know when the football team didn't lift weights, the lacrosse team didn't lift weights now. And it's more and more common because you're lifting in college four days a week, essentially year-round. So I think that's a big piece now, the strength and conditioning part of it, is running, being in good shape. That starts to separate you a little bit, making good decisions that way. But the big thing that doesn't take any more money from mom and dad is, is wobbles, your stick scouts. What separates good kids and great kids in high school level, especially, and kids that we recruit is their stick works. It doesn't matter if you're five foot six or six foot five. How good are your stick work is going to be the biggest thing? That's you, a stick, a couple balls, and whatever you can find a wall. That's all it takes. <laughs> tennis balls, too. Tennis balls are a great way to improve your stick, especially your offhand. When you think about how light a tennis ball is, we do a lot of our drills in, the, in our individual session with tennis balls. 
you throw a tennis ball, you can see. We love instant feedback. We have Twitter, email to your cell phone, you're, you're always plugged in. Tennis ball gives you that. If you don't drop your hands all the way back behind your ear and catch the ball softly, the ball doesn't stay in there. If you don't snap your hands and throw the ball firmly, the ball doesn't go on a, on a line if you have a tennis ball. So we do a lot of our stuff with tennis balls. A big question we always get is like, how do you get no notice by us? You know, that's a question that a lot of kids have, parents have that one all the time. Is, you know, we go to all these tournaments and, and Coach all puts a titanium team and a lot of great events. But it makes it easy for us because, again, for me personally, it makes it easy because I ask Coach all who are the best guys that we should be looking at. So I go there and watch the team play two, three times and everybody has to see those guys. So that's kind of how the process goes. Kids send highlight tapes. For us, the big thing we talk about is anything we can click on is co coaches are really simple. If you send me an email that says, hit this link, watch my highlight tape, I'll do it. If you say, go online to this website, register here, here's the password, I don't do it. Like, I'm not afraid to admit that. And me and every other Division One coach out there will see the same thing. Like, we're simple. Click this. It comes up. We feel really good about that. I think everyone's a little different. I, I think the big thing that, that we see is, like, you're looking for someone. For us, you're looking at athletic guys. I mean, that's the first thing. If you want to see, you know, if you're a goalie, it's a little different in that side of it. You know, our goalies can't pass our run test, but they can save the ball. So they get a little leeway than everyone else gets. Um, so you're looking to see some kind of athletic play. For defensemen, you know, we get clips of guys going over the head all the time. Like, no coach in the country likes that. You know, we see that, like, he goes over the head every single time. He's like, go like Those plays oh, don't get us excited. That low to high rip as an attackman doesn't really get me excited because all I'm thinking is, like, God, it's going to take a long time to fix that guy's shoot ball right now. <laughs> you know, so, so I think fundamentals is a big thing. I think athleticism, like, fundamentals. It, it's putting the time in. Across a great game, just 30 minutes a day can make you a Division One player. If you're not six foot three, you can't be a Division One basketball player. You know, but if you can throw the ball 30 minutes a day, righty and lefty, you got a good opportunity to play college across. 